welcome to Cover Story. Today we are joined by one of my favorite guests, RSS leader Ram Madhav. Favorite because no matter what question you ask him, he always has something intelligent and thought provoking to say. So welcome back Mr. Ram Madhav, we are seeing you after a very long time. Thank you. And uh, well, today we are also meeting on a very good note for the BJP and the RSS, 8 years of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, eight, uh, what has been the highlight of uh, Modi's reign, what would you say? I would say good for the country also. Besides BJP, RSS and all, uh, I, uh, usual na normal comparisons happen about governance and all those aspects. They are all very valid. I am not uh, denying that. But I see it in a, from a very different angle also. Hmm. I was thinking in our country, there were two uh, other prime ministers who had had this uh, honor of completing eight years in office. Yeah. First was Jawaharlal Nehru. Hmm. Look at his eight years. He rode into power over that aura of uh, India's independence Why movement. Why the BJP always goes back to No, no, to I'm Nehru, starting huh? with him because Achha. he had had a tenure of almost 17 years as Prime Minister. Hmm. In fact, there's a famous book called 6,000 Days. Nehru was in uh, that uh, Prime Minister's office for 6,000 days, hmm. close to 17 years. Uh, probably Modi ji will break that record or what we have to see. Uh, uh, 17 then, years then, of Modi. The, <laughs> <laughs> okay. the, the next person who had held that office for more than 8 years was Dr. Manmohan Singh. Hmm. End of 8 years, Manmohan Singh was deep into corruption scandals. By 2012, his government was neck deep into corruption scandals. Nehru rode to power not because necessarily because of his own effort or anything. Hmm. There were certain historical reasons. All senior leaders had uh, had uh, been removed uh, by the fate by fate from the scene, and uh, there was no challenger for him. He he continued for eight years, but uh, you know his eight years are his. You take it up to 1964. Uh, significant for that big China failure. Hmm. One of the big events. Otherwise, the economy that he inherited when he handed it back to the next prime minister, we were in a poor shape than what he inherited. India was in a poorer shape than yeah. it was before. But these are two bugbears that might bite Modi also, China no, and the economy. but look at Ch Modi's eight years. Hmm. The most difficult phase during COVID, he was able to handle it very well. Today, if uh, Modi ji or government of India is respected globally for any one important reason, that is, uh, you know, the vaccines and the COVID management essentially for a country of this size, how we have been able to vaccinate the population and all. These are certain major achievements. And a self-made leader, not someone who rode to power over uh, father's name, grandfather's name, or, you know, there was uh, some, uh, you know, some mm. leader who was promoting him, like Gandhi in Nehru's case. Nothing of that sort. A self-made leader, after eight years, remaining so popular that Nehru also did not have big opposition at that time. Hmm. But in Modi's case, today, practically no opposition is visible now and uh, in next few years to come. That is the level of popular support that Prime Minister Modi enjoys today. That speaks about his eight years, his governance. As I said, it was not because of any other thing but his governance. There is nothing else that Modi can claim. He cannot claim any other, uh, you know, inheritance, any other thing. So I think that is a major thing for him. And this popularity is like, uh, in all my opinion, likely to continue for many years to come. You are saying governance. I am seeing this as a cult of Modi. You know, you talk about COVID management. Management is a key word I would use also for Prime Minister Modi. Cult is another word. The, the, he, yes, he's done away with politics of entitlement. You know, I always say this about Rahul. If Rahul was put against any other BJP leader, he may have had a chance. But against this whole aura that is Modi, he just has no chance at all. It is not just aura. See, aura comes if you with have some godfather. Are you few are naturally inheriting a few things like in as I said in Nehru's case he had a godfather he had a father and he had that aura of India's independence movement. Huh. None of them were there in Modi's case. That's why I said a self-made leader, self-made politician, he has carved out a place for himself in the hearts and minds of uh, the country of the people of the country. Uh, that is uh, his strength today, and this. Uh, 
uh, one may say one may call it cult or whatever mm. but this is because of the things that he is doing to the people as i said what is the basis even if assuming it is a cult what is the basis for that cult he is doing certain things good ha what Nothing do else. people what do you think is his biggest usp with the people ke he has no family they trust him uh, he can sell a scheme well what what is it that strikes they that? trust him because he has delivered ha he has delivered on development front he, he convinces people he delivered no no it's definitely people uh, got a lot of benefit from his governance and uh, you know today largely people's basic needs have been taken care of by this government the first government which has taken care of the basic needs hmm. when i say basic needs That's two square meals a day a place to live hmm. and you know minimum uh, income for a family that much has been ensured for the first time after independence by this government i mentioned to about uh, nehru when he came to power and when he left power how the poverty rate in india has gone up after 14 years uh, are you take it as 17 years but in this case in modi's case today all all the uh, you know indicators suggest that human development indices are definitely performing better than before modi can be criticized for maybe some perception issues a dominant leader as you said you know he is Autocratic. creating an aura <laughs> for himself etc etc but not about governance his governance is one thing that is, that has become his big strength so you said poverty you know pehle kehte the aadhi roti khayenge mandir wahi banayenge now you are saying ke do roti bhi khilaunge aur mandir bhi banayenge aur mandir par ek se zyada nahi aur mandir bana rahe ke mood mein hai i am talking about gyanwapi mosque <laughs> no uh, gyanwapi mosque uh, is actually has become an issue actually because of a court case yeah. right now some people locally have gone to the court demanding permission to you know go inside and do worship because they insisted that there was there was the practice of hindus worshiping inside until 60s hmm. it was stopped sometime in 60s it should be resumed and uh, then the court said okay they are claiming that there is there are lots of hindu symbols inside and they used to go and worship do a survey ha huh. that case is at that stage right now correct and supreme court itself is seized of the matter so as far as we are all concerned we would like that legal process to take its own course but you outsourcing your no 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 no, no outsourcing court. is happening it is a demand from people hmm. it it has gone to the court it has not gone to any other place it has not gone to any organization hmm. it has not gone to any government it has gone to the court judiciary in india is very independent and very transparent let us see what happens hmm. but i will uh, put a slightly larger question on it ram janma bhumi also began in the same manner in late 1940s as a court case we at one level we allowed courts to take their sweet time yeah. in that case they took uh, how many years 60 70 years finally to come with a verdict and i don't know how many years courts will take in this case, in this matter also but at some point after 2 3 decades it led to popular emotions rising organizations jump in our own organization joined that moment then bjp extended its support in uh, some time uh, and later events are very well known hmm. finally when the judgment came judgment came in favor of the temple the temple is coming up now right everybody had hoped that now this issue is resolved for good hmm. but we didn't realize that what was at the root of that problem was mutual disbelief between the communities there was an effort by mr chandrashekhar as prime minister if you recall hmm. there was an effort to, to find a solution through dialogue even rao tried it narsimha rao uh, for some time he also tried it but uh, i mean we blame the muslim side they may say no no hindu said did not cooperate but for uh, for hmm. whatever reason we decided we will not go take that path we will take the judicial path we also said we will agree abide by judicial this thing hmm. i think now when this new issue is coming up not just one issue social media is agog with many Matra issues next. many temples and many of these things it is time communities came together i mean when i say communities sensible civic leadership comes together sits together and chart the course for next 100 years don't do it for one temple again how do we co inhabit this country how do we live together in this country what are the things that we have to keep in mind where we have to understand the sentiments of each other 
you see uh, i'm sorry i'm taking a little longer time but right oh, now you're saying something he, very important huh? right now about temple mount in jerusalem a new dispute is going on a court there has issued a verdict that jews can go and pray there muslims say no no you cannot pray there you can come but you cannot pray hmm. not just india's problem alone this is the problem in many other countries so there is a problem we had we have inherited issues of iconoclasm hmm. islamic iconoclasm of medieval period it is time we sat together and decided how to go about it one after the other we keep doing it we will be stuck in this debate we have to come to an understanding maybe the time for it is coming that i think people should understand you know but the problem with this argument is that a you have to decide who the community leaders are in the, you may decide from the hindus but the muslim community there is no leadership uh, you know straight leadership b uh, the idea of talking is uh, compromise means the muslims compromise it's is it you know would you uh, would the other side also agree to compromise if the case is stronger or is it that they have to compromise all along no i'm saying uh, let's not talk in terms of let's not talk in terms of compromise win defeat at all Hmm. let us talk in terms of understanding each other let this be an opportunity for sensible people to come together i am sure Can in you both communities sensible people from the- i am sure in both communities i find many people who come who come to me and tell that you know it's time we started a dialogue I you see. know since i mentioned about the nehru time and all that so that was the time when a vajpayee was openly praising nehru and nehru was reciprocating dialogue we were opposing oh, each other fighting gaya. with each other oh, is not there uh, why are you th- why are we thinking that it's gaya hai so i am saying dialogue should continue hmm. you may not agree on every issue then you may find a formula which is win win i give you an example in yeah. madhya pradesh there is a place called dhar dhar has a saraswati temple that temple also doubles up as a mosque and there on on tuesdays hindus go and worship on fridays muslims go and offer their namaz only problem comes when any muslim festival falls on a tuesday or the saraswati puja falls on a friday that time it's a land order challenge managing both the communities but yet there was an agreement going on i'm not saying it's an ideal situation hindus may demand that no 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 it's our temple give it to us muslims may say no leave it for masjid fully but once you understand each other way out is possible and in 21st century we need to now start having more dialogue and address these issues it's a very positive note i want to take a break especially in the polarized times we live in to actually even the possibility of a dialogue there's no dialogue between bjp congress and you're saying two communities should have a dialogue it's a good thought but we're going to take a break so hold that thought Hello and welcome back to Cover Story. We are in conversation with RSS leader Ram Madhav. It's been a very pretty interesting conversation. We've been following it. We were discussing of you know solutions. As you were saying, find a template solution. Don't outsource everything to the courts. And you even suggested the communities should talk together. I mean, let's resort this mandir masjid thing once and for all. Uh, has do you see your government going ahead with this? no i am not talking uh, from uh, any government uh, perspective i am not saying government should should do that in fact ideally i am one person who has always in fact i have written about it in my book also that uh, these uh, these areas like temples anyway mosques are not under co- government control anyway even temples should not be controlled by the governments that's the other L- let let uh, the society capable society let it handle those things so outside the government there should be initiatives for people to come together as i mentioned sentiments are important no if temple in temple mount matter muslims still hold so much sentiment about it why can't muslims in india understand that sentiments of other communities also will be there i am not at all for a moment suggesting that means you should leave this you should leave the tunnel first of all do you appreciate that they are important uh, places of worship just as it is important for you uh, the alaksa mosque is important or uh, hagia sophia is important for you um, temple mount is important for you um, similarly hindus will have their uh, own sentiments you need to talk and take into account those things because we have had a very bad history of iconoclasm in this country not just this country europe has had it we also have had it it was medieval islam which had indulged in certain activities 
why should you carry that albatross why not that doesn't again mean that you should now you know go and do everything everything you return and even that i am not saying but you should first of all decide that no it is an albatross around my neck let me talk to hindus how do we resolve it it is possible there are people enough sensible people in both communities who can sit together that's a pretty encouraging thought in fact i'm going to leave it on the table and maybe have more discussions let there be a discussion around this uh, but moving on to another topic that you are an expert on china you written a book also on china and we are seeing now india is walking this huge tight rope between brics and quad between you know uh, both the groupings we are leaning more towards uh, you know at one side we are supporting ussr but we are also now wooing the us or being wooed by the us rather so how do you see this uh, panning out okay i'm not an expert on china or anything but i do have some views on it uh, quad we still hold it as an economic and development centric arrangement it's not even an alliance it's an arrangement we four countries are together uh, to you know work together for certain eco- economy related environment related supply chains related or you know education many other areas we decided we'll work together one good thing that has happened around the time of this quad is 13 countries who are active in this indo pacific region they got together to explore the possibility of working together as an economic uh, uh, economic group again it's not an alliance it's not a free trade between 13 countries we will work together to ensure that uh, the whole region is benefited and every country is benefited out of this region because this region but it responds to china uh, this is uh, not necessarily see china unilaterally uh, has its own plans for the region mm. it uh, works with many countries it gives financial aid then in in return it uh, you know takes assets from those countries uh, it's a it's a it's a very well uh, you know uh, crafted road map that china has but here these these 13 countries now will work towards achieving certain kind of coordination cooperation among uh, indo pacific countries which is very good and i don't think everything should be seen from china prism but it is correct china sees it that way why should we see it china sees india from a us prism oh, india and china have 70 billion dollar bilateral trade us and china have huge bilateral trade This is a trade trade arrangement. This hmm. is not any uh, military arrangement. But we are being wooed by the US and other countries to uh, have supply chains, and then where China is cut off. You know, the whole idea of this whole economic arrangement is to cut off China. No, but China cuts off India in many areas. Trade is a win-win thing. Hmm. Trade is not charity. We won't do trade to benefit China. We do trade to benefit our country. Yeah. So trade is. as long as yeah. it is not harming the interest of any third country nobody can complain that are you two are doing it only to exclude me no what we have to do with you we are doing with you uh, the greater issue of military security uh, relationship between our two countries it remains tense it remains uh, uh, at one level there is a stalemate today because they still have to vacate two three places uh, which they, they try to come in they have to go back in those areas which they are so far not agreeing to do they have vacated six places another couple of places are remaining i hope uh, we will resolve it in due course so the india not censuring russia how do you explain that we have very clearly stated that war was wrong more importantly the suffering of the civilians was even more uh, you know uh, unacceptable to india and we insisted that there should be a diplomatic or negotiated resolution of this uh, whole issue now uh, ukraine russia crisis has many facets the very evident facet is russia's aggression which nobody supports mm. but we but haven't there are that. many other aspects of it whether whatever the western powers were doing in ukraine was acceptable should they do all those things is a debate that one should uh, engage in you know peace cannot be a one way traffic or only one side's uh, responsibility peace requires both sides to come together and understand now even today you see there is no effort happening 
to contain the world instead you will see every second week hmm. america sanctioning so many billion dollars to give more weapons to ukraine germany offering more weapons hmm. U- uk is giving more weapons fair enough then who will work for ending the war their countries like india are trying to you know suggest that okay uh, you are doing a few things keeping ukraine's interest in mind who will uh, keep the global interest do you know something this ukraine crisis has affected us okay yeah. our prices yeah, have gone up wheat. but imagine the situation of smaller countries small african countries which used to depend on wheat imports from uh, ukraine are struggling today where do you see this heading uh, the russia ukraine crisis uh, war you know as i said everybody from this side and that side is very busy promoting more war there hmm. more support is going here more support china is supporting russia it is encouraging russia so is there anybody who is now working on finding a resolution where is the united nations which is actually mandated only to stop wars not to promote wars but unfortunately nobody is playing that role how is do you see india's role a lot of people are saying india should be the uh, peacemaker okay india i mean i think prime minister modi spoke with both the leaders hmm. uh, with the, uh, president putin and uh, the leaders in uh, ukraine zelensky and others uh, but it requires uh, much greater effort india will definitely be doing its own bit but uh, to stop the war and find a find a kind of a resolution to this uh, standoff requires much bigger uh, effort much bigger involvement by whom you see united nations or definitely the international uh, institutions should take the lead rather than remaining mute victims that they have been doing for last two decades not today iraq happened un was a mute victim wars happened in africa mute victims after the war they go to help the people how does it help serbia they were mute victims so for 20 years we are seeing this phenomenon of international agencies just uh, you know standing back not doing anything the last but not least i also you know you spoke about the opposition in the beginning i just remembered uh, rahul gandhi's speech uh, at cambridge which the bjp has uh, poked a lot of holes at and you know he's become again uh, so is i mean this whole he raised important uh, you know an issue of course is ridicule but this whole idea of india being a union of states it is there in the constitution he of course phrased it very badly and he could not complete his thought he just left it halfway there but uh, do you, uh, what do you find very objectionable in what he said no it is objectionable in this sense that that uh, uh, what he is saying hmm. is factually may not be incorrect because our constitution Bharat, does not use the word nation which is a fact hmm. i mean this one should admit hmm. uh, in the preamble it says we are uh, we are the state. people of india it says we the people of india hmm. in article 1 it defines india as a union of states but that is the political understanding that you get out of Uh, this constitution and this arrangement but that india has been a nation from time immemorial is uh, is as an accepted proposition not just by us even the arabs used to call us al hind the whole world what is india if it is not a nation may mr rahul gandhi try to explain if it is only union of states it is nothing more than that we are saying india union but of states but the congress is saying if you take away the states then what is india no no that point is well appreciated nobody is taking away states states have full rights full today prime minister was there in two states right. chief minister of both states did not turn up at the airport where is federalism in danger we have too much federalism here that chief ministers do not even uh, come to wish the prime minister at the airport because they happen to be on the other side of the political spectrum so this is all in uh, propaganda without real understanding of india i mean mr rahul gandhi lacks full understanding of this country that is what i can only deduce from it i'm not ridiculing him he is entitled to his view but i'm saying india is only union of states not a nation is a foolish argument you can say by constitution we decided it has to be a union of states but remember we are not a federal uh, by constitution there is no federalism word in constitution So you're saying we are not like the US, not a confederation, but exactly. we are uh, uh, exactly. states which are bound together. By See, this whole discussion happened in the Constituent Assembly. Hmm. Why federalism word was not used? There it was decided we won't be a federal U- entity like America. It was decided there. Why we were only called Union of States or we the people of India, not nation of India? 
Ambedkar felt that we are lacking in that national spirit. We need to build it. We are divided on caste. We are divided on religion, language. We were fighting, so we have to build that national spirit. So constitution is meant to create that national unity in terms of uh, you know a, a sort of a national consciousness. But as a as a society, we have been a united nation for millennia. Is a is a basic proposition that keeps India united. India one. That unfortunately, Rahul Gandhi, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, doesn't appreciate. Speaking of opposition, uh, do you see it now sourced at regional levels? Because this whole pan-India opposition, which is the Congress, is not getting its act together. But regional parties are. So, is that now the future of opposition? No, in regions there are parties which are which are strong in their respective hmm. states and, and respective regions. Also in some but states. I can tell you, uh, this is a phenomena. A phenomena we witnessed immediately immediately after independence under Nehru for 15 years until he was alive. No other party could really rise. The CPM tried to run a government for a few years in uh, Kerala, but it was dismissed in a very unconstitutional manner by Nehru, and that was the end of it. When he was alive, there also it was Congress. So, a phenomena not exactly the similar one, but a very very popular leader. I mean, today if you look at uh, the popularity ratings of Prime Minister Modi and the other leaders. There is nobody in this country who can come anywhere near him. In that sense, I am sure Prime Minister Modi will continue to be the at the hel 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 helm of FIR for many years to come. Seventeen years is what the record he has to beat, as you said. But on that note, thank you so much and congratulations on the eight years. Uh, and as you said, many more to come. But we I hope we'll have many more interviews. You've left a very provo provocative thought on the table, which we hope to have more discussions on. We're going to leave it out there for you to uh, think about, chew on, and maybe come back with more thoughts. Thank you. For more such videos. Subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.